Hello there, my fellow snotlings, and welcome back to another lore video from the wonderful setting of Warhammer Fantasy. Since I've noticed that many of you seem to enjoy my earlier greenskin videos, I figured why not have another one. Last time we talked about the Savage Orcs, and I did mention that the goblins of Warhammer Fantasy have a lot of lore behind them. So indeed, it is the goblins which are today's topic. But there are also many kinds of goblins, and today we're gonna give them an overview, followed by more details on the forest goblins, as the title says. I'm also gonna make a poll at the end, so do stay and vote. I'm your host, the green-skinned narrator for today, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The goblins often live in the castoffs of other races and frequently thrive in the shadows of their bigger cousins, the orcs. On an overall rate though, they are a race of miserable, treacherous, petty thieves and cutthroats. Goblins can be found pretty much anywhere, but they are often divided by several distinct subspecies, which are fairly unique in their culture and physiology than the more common goblin, also known as the Plains Goblin. For example, the Night Goblins are famous for living almost entirely in caves deep underground, and have a strong aversion to sunlight. The Forest Goblins are known to dwell almost entirely in the woods. The Fire Kobolds are goblins which have adapted to volcanic areas such as the Red Cloud Mountain. By contrast, the so-called Troglogobs have adopted to aquatic regions, and are often found close to rivers or seas. In the faraway Nagarov, escaped goblin slaves have gone native, becoming so-called frost goblins. The turquoise-skinned Noblar are a very distinct offshoot living in the slopes and river valleys of the mountains of Morn. But maybe the smallest and most pathetic of their kind are the so-called snotlings. Creatures which are so dull-witted and simple in mind that they serve no other purpose other than food or pets, even to other goblins. The common goblin, also known as the plain goblin, can greatly vary in size and habits, but almost all of them are universally small, scrawny, quick, and evil-minded. Because most of the orcs are too lazy or too stupid to do anything other than fighting, it is the goblins that are the primary labor force for many greenskin tribes, often doing the hunting, the building, the herding, and the crafting. While they do lack the size and actual strength of their cousins, they are considerably more cunning and intelligent. Nevertheless, due to their weak and cowardly behavior in a society that only respects strength and size, Goblins by default do not have a strong position in an orc-dominated tribe. Most of the goblins are extremely weak as an individual, and so they naturally tend to band together in large groups or mobs as a form of protection. In some cases, goblins have split away from their abusive orc cousins and formed their own exclusive goblin tribes. Usually the most successful of these consist of wolf riders, which roam the deserts of the Badlands to the south, or the night goblins, which live in the mountains of the east. When in battle, goblins are extremely cowardly, and they are far more likely to run away from the enemy than face them one on one. It is only in the most obvious circumstances where victory is a certainty that they will actually stay and fight. Goblins wear primitive scraps of crude armor and form into their own warbands of lightly armored infantry, equipped with wooden shields, rusty swords, or hunting spears. Most of the goblins will prefer to kill their foes at a safe distance, utilizing primitive bows and throwing spears to tackle bigger and powerful opponents. When they are in great numbers, and with a bit of proper encouragement, a goblin army on the attack will almost always outnumber the enemy by nearly 3 to 1, using their overwhelming numbers to smother the enemy. And with the overview out of the way, we can now move on to the more special forest goblins. A forest goblin is not so physically different from the average plains goblin. 
They are the same size, have the same green skin, and overall it would be difficult to tell one from the other were it not for their distinctive styles of dress and skin painting. The forest goblins represent a cultural adaptation of the lands they live in, very much like the fur-clad wolf riders of the plains. And they are not in fact an entirely different breed of goblinoid, like the snotling. The forest goblins decorate themselves with colorful feathers, often sticking the quills directly into the skin, as goblins, as a whole, feel very little pain. Different tribes of forest goblins can use different colors and combination of feathers to identify each other. Metal ore is very rare in the forest, so the forest goblins trade with other goblin tribes, swapping captives and fungus for ore from the mountains. Because they don't have a lot of ore at their disposal, the forest goblins like to use bones and teeth to make armor as well as decoration. They wear war paint and broad bands of color over their bodies, bright red and blue being the most popular. And these are commonly applied to make V-shaped chevrons over their faces and arms. It is this combination of brightly colored feathers, bits of bone and war paint which adds to their frightening appearance when they come out of their forests to carry out raids on surrounding villages and farms. Furthermore, when they charge, the forest goblins are known for screaming out their horrible, high-pitched, undulating battle cries. Their shields and banners often have spiders on them, and spider decorations are common for buckles, pole tops and weaponry. Why are they such great fans of spiders though? Well, we're gonna find out in a minute. Ever since the goblins have entered the primeval forests, they have been prey to the giant spiders dwelling there. Those goblinoids adapted their customs to the woodland environments, becoming the precursors of the forest goblins we know today. They soon found that packs of giant spiders could be defeated and over time even serve as mounts. The bigger gigantic spiders could be fended off, and if their broodlings were captured, they could be hand-fed and turned into great steeds for the goblin leaders. Over time, the forest goblins became experts when it came to capturing and using these creatures. They even eat certain kinds of spiders, which they regard as the best kind of flesh to be had. Still, other spiders are milk for poison or kept as pets. Unfortunately, no tribe of goblins could stand the onslaught of the rare and mighty Arachnorok spider, whose appearance spelled a horrible end for a whole tribe, or at best a rapid move of the camp, with a lot of fearful backwards glances. The goblins would reason that since the powerful arachnid could not be defeated, maybe they could be appeased. Eight-legged totems began popping up alongside the traditional idols of Gork and Mork. The shamans of the forest goblins, having recently discovered the hallucinogenic venom of the tiny spiders, began talking about the many-faceted eyes of the so-called Feaster from Beyond. With tongues swollen purple from the bites of the tiny mouth mites, the shamans turned to worshipping the spider god. The tribes would follow their shamans into practice, and soon the spider cult was born. Although the gods Gork and Mork were not forgotten, in the black thickets of the endless forest the spider god ruled supreme. The shamans began leading gruesome rituals, and the tribes offered elaborate sacrifices to appease their new god. For some unknowable reason, the eight-legged monsters did not attack the forest goblin camps, which were surrounded by the spider totems. Some even crept to the edge of the firelit clearings to watch the tribes weave the spider dance and offer gifts of warm blood to the insatiable hungry kings of spiderhood. Emboldened by this attitude, some shamans dared approach their living idols. Many of them tried to communicate and were summarily eaten. Until finally the mystical properties of the small purple skullback spiders were discovered. By chewing on enough of these bulbous, plum-colored arachnids, a shaman either died a twitching and horrible death, or entered a state of shock, where new vistas and mind paths into the great beyond were opened. Or so they said. The convulsive rhythms of a mind-numb shaman will entrance an arachnorock. The great spider will sway back and forth on hunched legs, the image of the tiny gobble reflected in the black orbs of its many eyes. 
Under this hypnotic spell, the shamans discovered that they could communicate, in simple terms, with the Arachnorok. Instead of running away from these deepwood behemoths, the forest goblin tribes began to purposefully seek them out and make camps close to Arachnorok lairs. There, the tribe would offer the beast sacrifices and the shamans would coax the giant spiders out when an enemy was near. The spiders grew even more bloated due to the non-stop supply of rich blood. Many of the spiders began to remain in their lairs as still screaming food was thrown into their pits. Over long periods of time, the ritual wasn't even needed anymore, as the spiders had grown tolerant to the goblins and even allowed them to scurry about their hulking bodies and built great howdahs from which to shoot at the enemy below. The forest goblin tribes of nowadays can be found in the depths of many woodland areas, but most of them are concentrated in the wide forested belt south of the Empire. Stretching the length of the border princes from Blackfire Pass in the east all the way to Tylea in the west. Nevertheless, their most sacred land is called the Black Pit, also called the Valley of Many Eyes, in the depths of the Drakwald Forest. This is the breeding ground of the largest of spiders, and it is a death sentence to pass the spider totems marking the boundaries. So, for today's poll, I will keep it greenskin style and make it very simple. Option A is more orcs lore, while option B is more goblins lore. To vote, just write your choice in the comments below. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the average goblin and the more unique forest goblins for today. Definitely goes to show that goblin lore in Warhammer Fantasy is considerably richer than Gretchen lore, which are their equivalent in 40k. Personally, I find the goblins of this setting quite interesting and even amusing sometimes. Are you fans of the forest goblins? Or do you prefer the night goblins or some other variety? Do share any thoughts, opinions or questions on the topic in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please consider clicking the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching and have an awesome healthy day. May Gork and Mork smash you on the head.